<laughs> You're right here. You know, my, my I'm actually just here. Really, because I, I, all the violence we see in our neighborhood off of 131st and Harvard, um, you know, I really have no clue on how to prevent it. And I'm hoping really get some ideas. So that's what brings me. Over here, for a year, what, 97. Uh, what I do now is uh, I involve myself in like youth, youth activities like coach football, things of that nature. You know, you try to you try to teach boys how to be men. That's that's the main thing with with football. It's like it's a team. You have to understand that you have to unite with each other, and you can't do what you want to do and then want everybody else to do what you want to do and then think that you can win as a team. You have to come together, you have to learn. And I want to, that's what I try to do. I try to teach them to become stronger and, and mentally stronger. Or if they don't even make it to the league, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care for that. If I could, I'll put it to you like this, simple, simple. If, if there was a way if the if the players made it something, but they still became useless, like worthless, then my job is my job is about done. I would rather see you make it and be suitable for the world than be nothing at all. say would be far-fetched I don't believe it to be far-fetched because I see two million dollars dump into you know uh, the bike thing that they're doing with the motorized bikes and I, you know, I have no problem with that I think that that's good for the brothers and everything like that but you know there are brothers on you know like shore different types of places and if you put that on kids how are they gonna get there you know and so I think I, I want to be more realistic you know what I'm saying I want to speak to more of a a different demographic than everyone else speaks to. I was hoping to maybe find a little bit more clarity in that aspect because everyone speaks to the different community development, the outreach, things at that level, but like no one really wants to speak to the underlying truth, which what's really the, the root of what's going on in our neighborhood. And it's really just a, a, a thing of uh, not, you know, being accountable, I think. I think it's because you see it happening. You know the people that are doing these things but you're not speaking prevention. You're not, you know, telling them, hey, yo, man, you shouldn't do that. And more so, if you do do that, you know, I might not be so inclined to be cool with you anymore. Maybe, you know, maybe you don't have to necessarily go to the whole snitch factor thing, but maybe, you know, maybe just me and you not being cool enough, you know what I'm saying, should make a, make a difference. And I feel like maybe we should start to find a dialogue on that aspect because I think prevention is the key, man. Like, you know, and, and I'm really worried about the kids more so than anything else. Like. You know, the adults, the adults have already made up their mind, in my opinion. But the kids are the only ones that can really be shaped. And what can we do to actually help the kids? And I just really wanted to find some ideas, and maybe help find a dialogue as far as that went, to see if we could do something positive in that aspect. And that's probably why I totally agree with you. I mean, I always talk about this this disconnect in the generations that exist um, over the time. You know, when um, your neighbors. Everybody's business was everybody's business because we lived on the same street, you know, and we lived out for each other. Tracy is here. She was my neighbor. I was a bad little kid, but she always spoke into my life, and she's been able to see God work in my life and do something different. What I'm saying to that is that she's not my blood, you know. She was a neighbor that turned into family. Right. Um, and you're right. We got to get back to that. Um, um, definitely. It's, it's all the people that are afraid of things like, but, you know, the more people that, you know, we got to get out here. Just like you said, there's a small
small number of people here, yeah. but there are still people here. Yeah. You know, and then like, you know, you have to take that, you know, and build off of that. But there can be something done and I feel like the people that are willing to do it are here, you know, and there can still be more people and you know, I, I don't feel like we're limited as far as like policing ourselves. That's the thing. I don't feel like, you know, if, if we stop mm. depending on somebody else to do it for us, yeah. then maybe we can do it ourselves. But it's like everybody, a lot of people have said that. What I would like to try to find is like actual steps for us to be able to do so. Yeah. Gotcha. My name is Donald Boyd. I'm one of the city council in Ward 8. And we're not just kind of, we just, you know, listen to some ideas, get some ideas, but, um, the city of Cleveland, about the youth, about the crime we have going on, and just, you know, get a clear understanding about what everybody thinks, you know what I'm saying? So we can come up with some good ideas and to change the city in a good way. That's basically why I'm here, you know what I'm saying? That's what people got to say, because, you know, everybody got a voice. My name is Dion. Um, I'm only 20 years old but I've also seen and also been a victim of the violence because I was, uh, like when I was 18, I was attacked by three individuals who ended up robbing me and everything. So I've seen the violence, I've seen the hurt and everything that hurt, like, you know, that has our city been going through. And also I like to think of myself as a, a breaking that stereotype. They always say that youth and everything is, you know, just, I hear that some people say it's lost or whatever, but I, I feel like that that's not true. I feel like there's, you know, still hope, you know, look, like we were talking earlier, and there's our some, you know, children who can still, you know, and that aren't in the foster care. And really, I just want to be able to learn more and be able to grow into the leader and, you know, be able to help out more. and uh, I am a substance teacher. I've also worked uh, in the juvenile correctional system. I am very uh, disturbed by the trend that I see, you know, as I come across in the youth and educational system and just period, you know, youth that I come, some of the youth that I come in contact with, not all of them, but some, and, um, you know, um, I appreciate what you said about trying to build a network that will allow us to know what's going on with each other so that we can support each other, because I think that is, that's along one of the things that I've always wanted to do, is help out other uh, people who are doing positive things, you know, because I don't think you can, you can't change someone who doesn't want to be changed, but we need to begin to help and strengthen the people who do want to do things and, you know, so that we can uh, have influence and affect change. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that I'm in the right spot. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I just started doing, I'm a resident, I grew up in Cleveland Heights, I've been a resident of Cleveland Heights. Um, there's a program that I'm a part of now in Cleveland Heights, there's a, it's a collaboration with Future Heights, and they bring in, um, you know, the different things like the chief of police, and the uh, super schools, superintendent of schools, and uh, somebody in the government, um, I forgot what the title was, but that's actually happening next week, next Sunday, or this Sunday. But part of what they want to do, they offer grant money. They get people together who want to learn about leadership uh, and empowerment in Cleveland Heights and want to get together and uh, learn how to become a leader and so they you go through this program and they bring different influential people from the community and at the end of it you can uh, qualify to get a $500 grant um, 
So, and they also have another thing where they offer a thousand dollars for somebody who wants to do something community based that's going to help the community. So my idea, I'm a substitute, but a lot of times teachers don't make enough money, you know, and they, so, um, but I like to educate kids and sometimes in the curriculum, they don't teach what I think, you know, is necessary for them to be learning, to have the skills they need to have, you know. They're learning about the dog, you know, I don't know. Just some old stuff that I don't know what they learned about, but they need to learn about the government, the, their body, their health, you know, just some basic things that you need to know that we aren't taught. And so part of this uh, after school program and plus STEM things, science, technology, and all that, that I don't feel is addressed in regular school and so part of this, um, this $1,000 grant that I'm applying for is to do a Lego robotics program, which I've done with some kids. And I noticed that working with the Lego helps students to understand that it's a point to follow in direction. If you don't do the steps, one, two, three, if you don't do them in order and do the steps, you're not going to get the final product. You know, so it helps kids who sometimes don't they may at first think I don't need the directions or some kids operate like I don't need I know how to do this and then they come to a point where they're like no I can't do it I have to go back I have to learn how to follow directions and listen and they also learn um, it's a part where they do robotics and so I think that um, one way to get around I don't know what's going on with the curriculum but I'd like to find out who works who picks the curriculum and how to change that but another thing is to do all these after school programs that can help them develop in STEM that they don't have during the day and start it from, you know, little up. And another program that I wanted was the more men being involved, more volunteers. Like I noticed that the presence of men um, <coughs> in any setting just creates a different tone. You know, they kids will sit up they will be more aware that they need to be behaving, you know. And I think that can be an extra measure as maybe you have volunteers in the Cleveland School District or whatever district, and you have maybe men that maybe you have an hour lunch break or somewhere, you could just pop in because you're on the list. And you could just walk into a classroom and maybe the teacher is having, of course they need to be trained not to hem anybody up, I guess, but if they need to be hemmed up, I don't know. But, you know, just to be present there to create the the more boys see men men do care i seen some men you know came to my school you know and just to be that presence in there you don't have to have all the answers but i wanted to create that network too where men can come to the school and just be a presence there and 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 just do what they do by just being men